So this is a little demo showing you how to work with a web service to do an update from ADF Mobile. Specifically, I'm using here the ADF Business Components. Um, I created a um, service interface for my application module. Four departments and I exposed various operations, for example, the update operation, the get by key, things like that, the find. And uh, let's build a mobile application on top of that. So of course, we're in a different project now. Uh, we're switching over to our mobile project. We have a page flow that we create, the first page um, in here. We're just going to create a very quickly a uh, list. So to do that, we first create a new data control based on a web service. We'll call this one depth service. Sorry. And paste the wizard file location pick up all the methods we want to expose and click finish. Right. So that's our web service and now we can actually go design our list page. We have a data control here and the first page will just use the find departments view okay, which returns a list of departments and we're going to show it on our page so just drag and drop it over here and choose to drop it as um, list view. Okay. Um, you can pass parameters. I don't need parameters in this case. Just going to show all the departments. Show the name of the department. Click OK. That's the list. What we want to do is when someone selects someone from the something from the list item, right? We want to do some operation. So um, we take the operation called set property listener, drag and drop it onto the list item and we're going to copy the value from um, not actually the department name but rather the department ID into a page flow scope and uh, you can watch my other video about using ADF business component as a source for ADF for ADF mobile to get a little bit more information about this step, it's not very uh, relevant in the context of what I'm going to show now. And then the list item is also going to navigate us to the next page, so to the get update page. So what we do here is we get a department ID, put it in a page flow scope um, parameter, and then we're going to show this department on the second page. So let's create the second page. So this is the update page. Okay get a little bit more space here and um, what we want to show here is actually a specific department so we, we can use the get department uh, view method which actually accepts the department ID as a parameter and then returns uh, the details of a department so let's drag and drop this into the page and um, to create an updatable form like that okay it accepts parameter parameter is the um, sorry the page flow scope so we had this parameter that we set on the first page and that's basically how we uh, get the department. Now because we want this operation to actually happen each time that we get into the page, let's go to the binding, we have this operation here, we want to actually add a specific explicit invocation of this method. So this can be any um, text here. The important thing here is just to point to this method and then say this is the first thing we want to execute when we go to the page. Go, execute, fetch the specific record, show it to us. Okay, so now we're showing the information in an input form. What we want to do next is actually allow people to update the data and then update the database. To update the database we have another method that we need to call. And this method is the update department. Now the update department has a parameter that it receives of this type. Okay. Now to get this parameter into our page, if you look up here, we have a set of parameters. This is the update department uh, parameter that we need to get into the page. Right. And we can drag and drop it again into the page like that. And you can actually create a form. Okay. So in a normal application you will just create this form and it will have you a place where you can put in values, 
update um, the application right in our case we actually already have fields that have the update values okay or the values uh, the original values and we want to take the values from here copy them over here to this form and then submit the update okay so to do that we can actually um, do it in a manage bin I'm going to do uh, one more thing and that's actually to add a button to the page that actually does the update so let's take the update department method drag and drop it over here to create a button okay you'll see that it uh, expects a parameter and the parameter is already there automatically populated for us because we drag the parameter object into the page so this is done for us click OK right so right now the if you'll actually run the page you'll see that you get the data about departments here in this part and then this is empty and then you can press the button but everything is empty so you're not actually updating anything so what we want to do is we want to override what this button does right now okay so, so right now it's doing this thing okay so if we actually maximize it a little bit it's going and doing the update department executing it we want to actually do it in a manage bin and we want to do a couple of copies before that so to do that we're going to go into we're standing on the button looking at the properties and we're going to define a new action listener so edit and if you don't already have a manage bin you can create one so let's create what you basically call a backing bin in ADF right and this can actually be in the view scope because we only need this information for this specific page okay and then in here we're going to have a method that does copy and update okay so now we have this new file which was created for us we can go in and in here we can invoke the method so what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to copy some code that I already written before and you can copy it from my blog entry that relates to this video so let's just copy this um, code over here and we'll, we'll cover what it does in a second okay. and we'll paste it into this method okay and um, as you can see we have a lot of imports that we need to do so let's also take those imports and bring them over here like that okay so now we can actually go and see what we're doing and um, first of all it might help before we do that to look at the binding to understand what's actually happens right now in our page in our page we have as you can see department ID name manager ID and location ID two times right one time is the information that we're fetching the second time is the information we're updating so the information we're updating is the one with the number one at the end okay and then we also have this method that actually goes and update what we're doing in our backing bin is first of all we're getting a pointer to the uh, context which is something we use later on and then we're using the ADFMF Java Utilities um, utility class to get the value expression of the department name for example get the value from there okay then get a value expression that points to the updatable department that we want to have and then we're basically doing a set value on this department one to match what we got from this department and we do the same thing for department ID and same thing for manager ID same thing for location ID then we use again the same utility class and we're getting a method expression pointing to the update departments view okay and we're executing the method um, let's just check one thing yeah that's the name that we're getting from here so that's basically what we're doing in our um, backing bin now in our page we don't actually need to show both forms we just need to show one form right so the second one for now I'm just going to put it in remarks like that okay and you can of course remove it completely just make sure that when you're removing it you're not actually removing the binding to the fields 
All right, um, that's all we probably need to do. Oh, one more thing, we might want to take the button, okay, that we have here, and do an action here. Let's do the back action, and this is a built-in action that allows us to navigate back to the page we were on before. So after we update the department, we go back to the first page that lists the departments. That's it. At this point, we can go and deploy um, our application to a mobile device, deploying to an Android in this case. Like this. And let's see what's happening. While it's deploying down there, we can also open here little window that will show us the actual data in the department's table. It will help us to monitor if our update actually works. Alright, so we're now in our device and our application is available here. Let's click on it and invoke it. So data shows up. We can choose the department. Uh, let's take the shipping department and click on it. And we get the data in this screen. So right now its name is shipping and we have a manager G and we can just go in and modify things. So shippy for example. Let's assign this to um, employee 101 and change the location to be um, 1600. And once we do this, we can click the button to update the departments. Takes us back into the first screen. Now, note that on this screen, we don't actually do a requery, so you don't actually see the changes. And um, to actually see the changes, you can go over here to the database. So this is what we had before, okay? Shipping and this data. Let's refresh the page. And you can see now Shippy with the updated data, okay? Uh, you can go back to the application and then maybe choose another department like IT and get the data for this department over here and again you can update everything just go into the field and you should be able to modify it and do some other value and update